This is Entomological Etymology, where I tell the stories behind the weird words we used to talk about bugs. This time, we're talking about the praying mantis. They have praying in the name because of how they hold their forelimbs, as if they're constantly lost in prayer. So where does the word mantis come from? This word comes from Greek, where it literally means a seer or a prophet. So the praying mantis is the praying prophet. Mantis is connected to the word mindsethai, meaning to be inspired. The root of mindsethai is menos, meaning inspiration. Finally, the Proto-Indo-European root of menos is men, which is a word that has to do with thinking. So many words spring from this root, like mental, mania, amnesia, and museum. Of course, mantises aren't really so concerned with the world of spirit. Mostly, they're just hungry. They use the spines on their forelimbs to grab and hold prey to eat. If kept in close proximity, mantises are liable to eat each other. You've probably heard the sordid tale of cannibalistic female mantises who mate first and then eat their male. I did a little reading, and it seems that female mantises do sometimes eat male mantises, but rather than a psychosexual ritual of sacrifice, hungry female mantises sometimes just prefer food over sex and choose to eat a male instead of mate with him. This happens about 20 to 30% of the time, which is a little bit worse than odds than Russian roulette. Let's talk about a few mantis species. First, the European mantis. This critter has the binomial name Mantis religiosa. In other words, the religious prophet. Pretty simple, right? Contrast that with a devil's flower mantis. To avoid the notice of their prey, these huge mantises, which can be up to 13 centimeters long, beautifully mimic leaves and flowers. This is called cryptic mimicry, meaning hiding by mimicking the environment. Cryptic originates in Greek kryptos, meaning hidden. Other English words based on cryptos include the crypt, where they keep the bodies, and cryptography for working with secret codes, with the word graph meaning writing. Devil's flower mantises come from parts of Africa, and they have the scientific name Idolomantis diabolica. The word idol comes from Latin, meaning an image or statue of non-Christian worship. So Idolomantis seems to mean the prophet who worships an idol, something the Christians who chose this name probably considered religious blasphemy. Diabolica means the devil. So clearly, the person who named this bug was a bit creeped out by it. But the devil's flower mantis has won over popular opinion and has become a popular pet species. Finally, we have the glorious orchid mantis. What a beauty, both to us and especially to other insects. Research shows that these mantises are incredibly attractive to flying insects, just like a real flower, which brings in prey for them to eat. So these mantises use aggressive mimicry as opposed to cryptic mimicry. This mantis lives in Southeast Asia. Their scientific name is Hymenopus coronatus. Hymenopus comes from Greek. That's hymen meaning membrane plus pus meaning foot, which is also found in the word octopus, the eight foot. So Hymenopus is the membranous foot named for all the little false petals they've got all over them. Coronatus is Latin for crowned as in the word coronation. I'm not sure if they're named for this little pointy part of their head, or just because they're so fancy looking in general. But Hymenopus isn't born gorgeous. They look quite a bit different as the first instar nymph. At this stage, they're actually mimicking something completely different. Not a flower, but another bug. An assassin bug. Assassin bugs have a nasty bite, and they taste bad to boot. So this coloration helps them ward off their own predators at this fragile stage of life. For the assassin bug, that red color warns off predators, and it's an example of aposematic coloration. Aposematic comes from Greek apo, meaning away, plus sama, which refers to a sign or a signal. In other words, a warning sign. But the mantis lacks the assassin bug's defenses and merely mimics them. So there we have it. Mantises can be holy or diabolical, but always masters of disguise. See you next time.